which one was it? R the Random Acts video for the, uh, was it the Hex? The Hex. I think it was the Hex. I don't know if you, if you did you see that video by any chance? Is that the one where they're in the floor picture, or is that? That's oh, they're, they're like in the hotel, the motel. That's not random acts. It was like there's one. The one that I saw was the Polaroid picture with Sean Price and like, uh, like who else was in it? That's a different one. That's yeah. Court, uh, oh, with the Sean Sean Price Sean Price video? Yeah. Or, okay, I've done the random acts stuff, but um, but I worked with Sean Price, you know, because he's part of random acts. So he was just yeah, he was just like kind of he's kind of he's a big guy and he was kind of intimidating, you know, at first. And then you know he says stuff and you're not sure how to read. Input, yeah. so, you know, you know what I mean, and it's I'm hard, hard to explain, hard to put into words. But I'm not saying it's like bad stuff necessarily. But he'll just say some random stuff, and I'm like, wow, what, what does he mean by that? Or <laughs> talk some shit, and you don't know if he's really talking shit or if he's, is he playing around. And it, it turns out, you know, after I after you spend a full day with him, by the end of the day, I felt like, okay, I get him now, sort of. You know, you can never. I don't think anyone can fully ever get Sean Price, but you can get enough to kind of uh, uh, to make it manageable. And, and he's a cool guy, and I really like him. He's, he's, a, he's a really, at the end of the day, he's a really humble dude and a funny guy. <laughs> yeah, Lucas, do you have any uh, projects you're working on right now that we should watch out for? Um, I'm working on another evidence, a couple other evidence videos. One is um, for Strangers, and one is for, uh, we're going to shoot one in May for Red Carpet, the Red Carpet with Ray Kwan. Um, and there's, look, look, I'm, I'm in the middle of writing four treatments right now. Um, let's see, one is for, uh, Brother Ali, I think I mentioned him from Rhyme Sayers. Another one's for Ninth Wonder and Buckshot. Um, so, uh, what else? Uh, Torre, you guys remember Torre by any chance? He's up and down. And, uh, Static Selecta and Terminology. So, again, you know, this is in the whole underground hip-hop, which I love, so it's, you know, you may not be familiar with all the artists, but, um, there's that. And again, you know, also trying to work on film st or, you know, narrative stuff at the same time. So that's pretty much where it's at right now. Um, what would you say is the you know the difference between working with like an underground artist slash label versus like a major label slash mainstream artist? What are some of the different types of challenges, similar challenges, etc.? Um, I would say well that's a good question. Um, the the like the small, like the, the artists, like let's say the more underground artists, the, you know, the guys that are more, um, you know, have smaller budgets, like a duck down artist, someone like that. I tend to enjoy, believe it or not, I tend to enjoy the smaller budget projects more than I do the bigger budget stuff because with the smaller budgets, you know, you really, you know that you're constrained by the budget and you know that the client or the label knows that. So you don't feel as much pressure to, you know, to, to, to do like everything and do too much. Although, you know, you go in there just with, uh, just with creative, you know, you're in there just trying to, to, to make things happen and trying to have fun with it. And uh, most of the time, those guys, those underground guys are really, uh, I guess, more artistry driven, too. So you're on the same page and it becomes kind of more fun for me that way. Um, and on the other, not, not, not to say that the, the, the major label guys aren't, but, you know, with the, with the bigger budgets, you know, um, they're expecting you, know, you, you to do a lot more. Um, so, you know, you're going to have to have a, a bigger crew. You're going to have to sort of you have to get a good AD on board and make sure your, your whole team is on point. You can't have any, like, messed up cogs in the system. Um, and the artists themselves tend to be more, uh, I would say more, it's, it's less about, I don't want to, like, put everybody in the same box. But, I mean, just my experience, you know, it, it seems to tend to be more about, like, just their, uh, more the aesthetic and their appearance and how, how they're, uh, conveyed like pers like personally, whereas the on the other side like underground guys just want a cool concept. I mean, even if it like I'm doing the video I'm doing for evidence, the next one like he's not even going to be in the video. It's going to be totally just uh, 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 actor driven, like Braveheart style like fighting, but with the with uh, those nerdy uh, role model like the movie role models guys that you know that have homemade Dungeons and Dragons costumes. <laughs> But epic, epic Lord of the Rings style, like cinematography and battle. So that that's that, and he's all for it. Whereas if I were to bring that to like, I don't know, like Soldier Boy, he, he probably wouldn't be down with that. He, you know, he wants to get his swag on. And I'm not talking shit. I'm just saying like that's that's a different demographic that he's trying to cater to, and that and you know, and there's a different type of video aesthetic that he's looking for. So um, 
so that that that's kind of the major thing that I see. Um, and then with the uh, the major label stuff, you're, you're typically dealing with a video commissioner. So you always kind of have a video commissioner, like you know, behind your you know on your shoulder, or, you know, looking down, at, you know, behind your back, just to kind of sort of over. They're supposed to just kind of like uh, facilitate stuff, but depending on the video commissioner, some can be a little bit more overbearing than others, and it's like you have somebody watching over you the whole time. And other times they 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 work as you know a good. Uh, uh, collaborator in a sense, you know, and, and a go-to or an in-between between you and the artist and the, uh, the management. So, um, you know, that could be good and bad sometimes, but I prefer just to be a me, a camera, an artist, and let's just go do some shit. You know I mean? That's what I love. Um, and I don't like to deal too much with the politics and dealing with the micromanaging and stuff like that. But, you know, sometimes you have to do it and, uh, you know, and it, if everything goes well, then, you know, the video turns out typically turns out pretty well. We got time for, Couple more, yeah, Jesse. Um, do you do like all the effects yourself in your videos? You said you're not, you don't consider yourself an effect guy, but obviously there's a lot of heavy effects stuff. Or do you work with someone? You know what? I I, I do all my I do all my effects, and uh, I, I think it's because. And here's why. I mean, I I I I've, I've entertained the idea of of farming some stuff out because it would definitely be a lifesaver for me. And many and a lot of, like I have these four treatments to write, and I'm behind on them because I was working on some. On, on editing some other thing where if I had just like let somebody else do it, I could have been probably done with these treatments. But the thing about um, editing to, to me, I feel like, and this is just my opinion. I feel like if I'm not editing it, um, I don't feel like I directed it in, in a way. Like and not to say that it does, just, you know, you could, you could be a director and you could totally direct it and, but you have an editor do it, but I like to be in there and just work it all out. You know what I mean? And, it's just my personal preference, and that's why I do it. That's um, uh, and then the post production thing I have fun with. And to me, a lot of times, some of the best ideas or some of the coolest ideas come to me in the post production process. So there's there's, there's some things I hadn't uh, accounted for or planned for, but I'll be playing around and I'll do something. And I'm like, oh, I could I can make this and put this here, and you know, a whole new idea will just just you know hash itself out right like before my eyes. And that those are the moments I love, and so that's why I. I, I, you know, I, I do the post-production stuff, but yeah, I do, I pretty much do it all. And I feel like more accomplished, like after I'm done, I'm just like, wow, I, you know, I feel like I made that, you know what I mean? Again, not to say that you didn't make it if, you know, if you, if you work with an ed a talented editor that you're on the same page with VFX artists, because I know that not everybody can uh, jump into it that easily. Um, it could be like a foreign language for a lot of folks. And even for, to me now, I don't know everything. Like I just, I just get by with as much as, you know, like, all right, this I pretty much accomplished what I wanted to do, so you know, I'm happy. Um, and but there's probably still like 75% of material out there in that world that I have no idea what like what to do or what it's all about. So, but yeah, I I, I could have said I could just answer that with yeah, I do everything. Next. Yeah. <laughs> we got time for one more. One last. Yeah. Um, I was just wondering if uh, you had like any horror stories or like big mistakes you made in the past that you learned from or something like where something like went horribly wrong on a shoot or something like that? Um, you know what? Not to, not to sound like I'm the shit. No, <laughs> no just things just happen. Like I, I rarely do I have I had, I've done so many videos, but rarely have I had like a bad, something bad go wrong, something bad happen. Um, and I think it's just because, um, that's my attitude going into a video is I'm always real positive and, you know, I just, I'm really upbeat. And so things tend, like, I feel like the artists, the crew tend to work off the director's energy and, you know, whatever kind of energy you're putting out there, you, you tend to get back. So things have been pretty good in that regard. I think the only thing that comes close to that would be a video I did for a group called The Dares. It was a, it was a video for Jive and Sony Online Entertainment. Um, the video concept was... Sony, on, Sony Online Entertainment has this game for like uh, kids and tweens and teens called Free Realms. It's like an online uh, multi, you know, role, role playing game where you have a you know, bunch of people on there. It's like a clean version of Warcraft. Uh, and they have, and then, and then Jive has this artist that, um, that sang a theme song for that game. And so these two entities came together and decided, you know, we should do a video that promotes Free Realms, the game, and promotes the artist. And so, um, you know, like, um, you know, when we tried to get that together, it, it, what was difficult about that was getting all the red tape and getting everybody on the same page, because it's not just like Jive. I'm dealing with 
Jive, and then Sony. And then these two have to get on the same page. And then I have to have, they have to get what they want to me. And I have to like take everything that they give to me and try to make sure everybody's happy. So in the pre-production part of it, it was a little bit, um, you know, sporadic. Um, but, you know, we got through that. But then on the day of the shoot, you know, we had a generator out. We shot it at a school. It was, it started raining really bad. I mean, um, that was, you know, out of my control, but, you know, it just kind of put a damper on things, no pun intended. It really, you know, kind of messed some things up and kind of threw me off a little bit. And then what was uh, the icing on the cake, I guess, on that one was that I had a guy who was like a really good friend of mine who I always felt like he'd be a good uh, production designer. Like he had never done it before, but I always had faith in him because he was a really good graphic designer. He, he just had a good eye for stuff. And you know, I had this stupid idea. Well, now in retrospect, it was a pretty stupid idea of help me have this guy who's never done any set designing at all do set designing on this video for a video that required there be like an on point set. Because what we, what I wanted to do was try to save time, and uh, I wanted to shoot a bedroom scene, but I didn't want to shoot it at a practical. I didn't want to shoot you know on, on location. I wanted to I'd shoot the school or shoot the classroom, and then move into like the multi purpose room where my plan, my genius plan was to all right, we can just set up some flats and we can just make a bedroom set that'll look realistic. Um, well, it turned out that that wasn't, did I just disappear? You're back. <laughs> um, I, wasn't, I wasn't just self-aware, but I just happened to see something like just go off and on. Um, but uh, what, did you guys, what did you guys catch that where I had my friend do the set designing? Yeah. Or production yeah. design? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, it turns out he wasn't really, wasn't really that great. Um, <laughs> and, uh, because after after we did the you know the classroom you know we did we shot so many setups like in the classroom and then it was coming down you know, it was raining hard we were moving the whole crew into the multi-purpose room walk into the multi-purpose room and it was just and you know, it looked pretty fit you know they had some flats set up and it just looked really didn't look like a real bedroom and then I was still willing to try to make it work like I wasn't like negative about it I was thinking okay we'll make it work the night or the the bad part about it like the horror part was that you know I was talking about the video commissioners. Video commissioner, it was end of the day, everybody's hungry, everyone's tired, it's raining, it's wet. And this video commissioner, hopefully he never watches this. Uh, he's a great video commissioner, but in this particular uh, incident, um, you know, he, he just, he looked, he saw the set and he just wasn't having it. And he was, he sort of kind of reamed me, like, in front of every, in front of my crew, like, was just kind of like, what is, you know, he was like, no, we can't shoot this. This is not, this is not going to work. It doesn't look like, and, you know, just kind of looking really pissed off, like openly pissed off where I felt like he could have been a little bit more respectful and let's, let's go off to the side, let's kind of, kind of talk about it and see what we can figure out. Because to me, I feel like uh, morale is super important on a set. And, you know, you want to make sure that, you know, your crew knows that everything's under control and you're going to figure it out. And realistically, I did, you know, I already had my own, okay, we're, like we're, contingencies that we were going to try to do. You know, I, I figured we could do some things in post. We could, you know, fix up the set a little bit, but... Uh, the video commissioner was making a whole big deal about, you know, this is not going to work. And, you know, so we turned out that whole art department spent the whole day putting these sets together and we never shot it. And so that was, that's pretty much the big one that stands out in my mind as being kind of like, you know, a horror story, but, you know, it turned out, it turned out okay. I guess. Oh, oh, and to finish that story though, we ended up having to shoot pickup shots like uh, a week later and we ended up getting the practical bedroom shots. And so that's, so it, it did look better though with the real bedroom, but I'll know not to do that, not to delegate and give my friends, not to hook up the homies anymore. <laughs> well, uh, our class is over, man, but we want to thank you so much for, for joining us today. Well, thank you guys. I appreciate you guys taking the time to listen to me ramble. Oh, it's great. Great ramblings. And yeah, man, and we'll, and we'll just stay in touch and, and thanks again, and we really appreciate it. It was highly informative and excellent and entertaining. So Anytime, guys. And uh, if any of you guys ever have any questions or anything, you guys feel free to reach out. Um, you know, my, my, my email address is on my, my website, and I'm sure you'll have, you have it somewhere there. But I'm always, you know, willing to, to help out. Because someone asked about mentors and stuff. And, you know, I, I haven't really had, like, really super dedicated mentors um, until really as of late. You know, this is related to more of the film narrative stuff. But... I know how important it is, and you know I'm always willing to, to help anyone who's asked for help. So, Great. all right, thank you, man. Have, thank a, have you. a great day. Thank you. All right, take care. Woo. Woo.